Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Lindsay Giese, and I'm the Executive Director for River Arts, Inc., and we are here for our third Coffee and Chats. And today, we bring to you a very special guest. You may know him from South Prairie Dancing with the Stars as both a contestant and, most recently, as a host. But, believe it or not, his day job is with the South Prairie Police Department. So. Please welcome Lieutenant Travis Hilliard. Cheers, Travis. Cheers. <laughs> so I, tell us a little bit about your background in case people don't know you from Dancing with the Stars. Um, my background, I've been in town with the police department since 1994. And um, I started out with the Department of Natural Resources as a, as a special conservation warden, worked there for the state for 25 years. Started in Sauk County back in 1990, um, where I taught middle school safety classes, hunter safety, and believe it or not, used to shoot 22s in the middle school for hunter safety back in 1990. Wow. So I can kind of tell you where we've come to 2020 now. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I'm starting my 26th year with the police department, and um, it's going really well. I wouldn't change it. It's it's great, and the people are fantastic, and um, it's, it's been fun. What's the, we're, I'm going to jump around with all sorts of questions. I'm fine. Help you with yeah. any of these, so what's the craziest call that's come in that you can actually talk about to the public? Well, I'll tell you, I had a call yesterday oh. and this, it was a phone call from someone I know and um, they called and said, Hey, I've got a, I got a question for you. I'm like, wait, hey, what's your question? I just got a call from a person who wants a snake exterminated out of his bed. I'm like, okay. I'm thinking, well, it's been pretty cool temperatures. The river's high, it's along the river. I'm like, okay. So he goes, I'm just wondering if there's any, any rules or regulations about the snake. I'm like, well, it depends what kind of species of snake it is. He goes, it's a six to seven foot boa constrictor. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I said, I said, the details on that. Now what? He goes, I don't know. I said, well, obviously it's someone's in the building. So, you know, it's, it's a prohibited snake by ordinance. They, they're not to be able to possess within the community for, for rightful reasons. You know, look at Florida. They've got bulk constrictors everywhere, like eating things, cars, you know, <laughs> small motorcycles. But um, so that was, that was yesterday. Wow. And it was, it was pretty crazy. I'm like, I, I couldn't believe it. Never I'm a like, moment. Yeah, so needless to say, um, I, I don't know what happened, but they went there and kind of took care of it. It wasn't a police matter. It was just a, a consult by phone. Yeah, do it all. Well, you know, this might be sort of a consult thing, too. Maybe this is a police matter. Can you tell me a little bit about the literal wild goose chase that you went on a few years ago? Yeah, you know, being a, being a river town that we are, we do have um, certain flyways with Canadian geese, ducks, mallards, divers, everything throughout throughout the, uh, the flyway we have. But but we do have a population of year-round geese, and then we have some farm geese that have kind of planted themselves with these Canadian geese, and we kind of call on this goose with a possible broken wing, um, actually in the 600 block of Water Street in downtown Prairie du Sac. And so myself and it was Paul Duman responded up there and you know we're very careful on how we deal with animals. You know we've got policy dictating how we do this and we gotta look at the species, look at rehabilitation, look at all these different things when we're making decisions on how to deal with these animals. But this this goose was a farm goose and the thing was like size of a Volkswagen Beetle and its neck on it was like the size of a, I don't know, it was like a, a coffee can. It was huge. And, and this thing, we're, we're on this, this hill, and this goose starts coming at Paul. And the first thing Paul does is expand his baton. I said, uh, <laughs> I, I threw a flag on the field. I said, we, we, no, we're going to just get out of here before this thing attacks any of us. And what, what happened is we just kind of, I think you were there, weren't you? Were you there? Well, I, was gonna, I know about it because you stopped in the gallery after the incident. Yeah. I, I mean, you were sweating. It was, oh, it was horrible. It was, it was bad because there's only only certain things we can control and not everything else is out of our control. And so 
we were able to maneuver this this goose down the hill onto the the tracks at the time and it went into the river and this goose is a very well-known goose um its name is norman and i didn't know that was the norman. yes it was norman oh you saved him we we did we did see norman was with another canadian goose and there was another mix of uh, another farm goose so that was norman and you know since norman is has been you know behavioral wise okay but he's moved that. back down towards Sauk City and he hangs out down by Vintage a lot. He's yeah, by the police department. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yep, so. well. <laughs> Needless to say, we see Norman, we say hi to Norman. Okay. We respect Norman. <laughs> okay, how many times have you sat in a dunk tank to support different groups? Oh my gosh. Oh, I bet you 15 plus. Wow. 15 plus. So I can tell you I, how it feels, um, the, the core temperature of the body when the water is 50 degrees coming out of a fire hose or if it's coming out of the, the well house or whatever. Um, I, yeah, I'm kind of a kind of strategy. Yeah, yes, I do. <clears throat> strategy. Okay. First, opportunity and timing. Timing, you want to be the first one in. Okay. Right? Or maybe the second one because the water always gets dirty. I always shower before I go to the dunk tank just because courtesy for the next person. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I, I don't go in there with long clippings on or just mow the lawn by hand or whatever. You know, it's just, you know, those are the types of things. Location, location, location. It's the sun out, you know, yep. bring a backpack with a towel, yep. change of clothes. Yep. And then when you, when you get into the dunk tank, always wear shoes. All right, because you know it's fencing. There's there's rivets. There's different things that you could possibly injure yourself with. And when you sit down, you're sitting on like a little diving board thing, and you want to keep your hands and elbows in at all times. And that's that's the difficult part because sometimes they go straight out to hit the walls. <laughs> that's good advice. It's really good advice. And the thing is too is get set. So all the kids will come up and they'll start launching balls like nonstop. But just tell them the time out, get yep. set, and then go. So you, you have to control that dunk tank. It's like an arcade game. You got to control it. Um, so I heard a little rumor that the police are moving towards my neck of the woods um, over by 13th and Prairie Street in Prairie de Sac. Is yes. that a confirmed rumor? That is a confirmed rumor. That is, um, we're working on a land purchase of that property over there. And so now we're just kind of in the process of exploring different designs and so forth but you know the because of COVID has been the timeline has been set a little bit differently but but yeah we we are looking at purchasing and finalizing that agreement with that property which is exciting yeah what is going to be the biggest benefit of the new building oh my gosh the the the, the building is just going to get us up to speed where we don't have to you know for example um, from an evidentiary standpoint, we're, we're going to have the, the proper lab equipment, the, the proper, um, you know, it just comes down to soapstone tables and or stainless steel to process evidence on the, the proper ventilation. Um, a lot of the heroin we're coming across, maybe laced with fentanyl. And you really want to do that in, a, in an, you know, an air exchanger where you've got neutral pressure, you've got, or negative pressure, you've got um, constant good air coming in, moving out the bad air, just for officer safety, um, space, victims of crimes, where they come in, you can have a little more privacy. Oh, yeah. um, just a lot of, just a lot of amenities that, you know, we've been working on actually for a career yeah. in order to get where we want to be. Yeah. Um, so since I'm such an, uh, a great citizen of this community, uh, I have never had the privilege yes, of, seeing, <laughs> of seeing the current police department Space. How many jail cells are there right now? We don't have any jail cells whatsoever. Okay. Everyone goes to the Sauk County Sheriff's Department in Baraboo. Oh. And the, the reason why we don't have any jail cells is because then it creates some new new policies and, and then we have to follow some different laws. For example, you know, anytime we take prisoners into custody and put them in a cell, we need to monitor those people 24-7. 
Um, so we, we don't do that. We let the Sheriff's Department deal with that and they're the experts when it comes to the corrections end of things. So that's where we take, take our folks. Great, I'm glad I asked that question. I didn't know. That's a good question, yeah. So we took, uh, we went to the Instagram and asked if, if the public had questions for you. And sure enough, I got a, I've got a list here. You did. You yes. Did. All right. So this is, these are questions from the public. So um, that JB Brennan 52 asked, going back to when you were a school resource officer, are there any kids that stuck out? Any that you still talk with? There is, there's a lot of them that I still talk with. And it's interesting because they, they come back and they're, and they're integrated in our community. They're, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're business owners. Um, and you see quite a few of them. And now I'm knowing their, their children, which is, is pretty cool. So we're, we're seeing, you know, actually two, two generations of kids since I was a school resource officer. And um, their parents are like, are like my parents because they're, they're always like, oh, you know, you did such a good job raising my kid through high school and all this kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. So yeah, I see a lot, a lot of kids. And if they're passing through town, they'll call, they'll, they'll email. I've got still a contact in Colorado who is a, a conservation warden in Colorado and he'll still email once or twice a year um, who is in, you know, kind of helped him through into that law enforcement field. So it's pretty neat. That's it nice. Is. I have a feeling that this particular question, um, this person was hoping that you would mention them as a... <laughs> I, mean, I knew where he was going with that. And he was a stellar student. Good. And, and he was... He was so far under the radar, it was just outstanding. Great. But it didn't, it didn't help his dad was just down the street, though, either, in a different building. True, true. It was, it was great. Yeah, you didn't have to watch out for him because his dad was already... Did, did No, his, his dad was oh, well ingrained. Yep, yep. Okay, um, Eric Shu, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, asks, what is one characteristic of our community that you believe will help us withstand and recover? I'll tell you, the, <clears throat> what's really nice about our community is we're working closely. You know, we kind of look at this globally, meaning we, we look at COVID globally. We look at what's happened at the national level. Then we look at what's happening at the state level, then bring it down to a local level, county, to our municipality, Sauk and Prairie. Um, we have an excellent work relationship with our other first responders, our, our fire, our EMTs, and with our hospital. Hospital connection with the Prairie Clinic connection has been huge because our our information is timely. It's like, well, you know what? I don't know the answer to that, but let me let me make a phone call. Um, Jerry's in contact with these folks on a daily basis. We have like here's all of my my and meetings. I should say G Jerry to you, Chief Struns to Chief us. Chief Struns to you, yes, <laughs> to everyone else. And so like here's all of our like our virtual meetings we, we attend. And so it's, it's kind of like Monday, through, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have a Sauk Prairie Chiefs meeting where we talk to the fire chiefs, the EMTs, uh, the, the chief of the ambulance, Jerry's on there, Chief Struns, myself, and then our admin staff. Let's talk about what is new. You know, for example, of the Great Sauk Trail. You know, what, what are we seeing with trending on the Great Sauk Trail? Because the DNR state parks are closed, but yet the Great State Trail is open yet yeah. through Sauk and Prairie up through the rec area. Yeah. So down on, you know, near the Prairie Clinic near Hemlock between Hemlock and Webster, I put up the speed board sign that says social distance six feet. You know, just little reminders like this in yeah. order to keep people vigilant. Um, even though within the last week and a half, there's been a lull. You know, if you look at that curve, right. we talk about the curve, it's starting to flatten a little bit. Yeah. But it's flattening because everyone's doing their job. Yeah. You know, we're, we're maintaining that six foot distancing. We are um, working from our homes where, you know, from a law enforcement standpoint, when we're outside of our squads dealing with someone in a social distancing perspective, we're masking up. Um, not so much the mask to, it's to protect you from me, vice versa kind of deal, when, when we put on our surgical masks, because um, that's just one, one more step one more layer of protection for the public too. Yeah. But it's communication. Communication and people really 
wanting to get this over and get through this. And that's what makes us, I think, a really unique community to, to work with, to really get information out there because people do take it serious. Um, I have to say, I appreciate your high tech system of that post-it note you just showed us as well. You like that? Yeah, I, I have I have more that I'll share too. Yeah, that's it's not it's it's on a magnet there too. So it's, right there. it's on my my office lamp. Um, uh, Eric also asked, "What is something you think most of us don't know about you?" About me? Yeah. Um, let me think here. Ooh. I know you're an open book. So. I read a lot. Oh. And I have a lot of good discussions. Like, I, sometimes people think I think sideways on things. But, you know, it's pretty, I look at, I want to look, take in every perspective in order to make a decision. Um, and, you know, like, when I'm at home, everybody thinks I'm weird. But when I'm at home, like, I've got a huge natural resources background. And so like my yard is prairie grass and my perennial beds, I do a lot of gardening. My perennial beds are a mix of pollinators and you know hummingbird species of flowers and so forth. So it, I could get real technical with genus species names and Latin names, but that was college way back when. But that's that's something I, I'm really in tune with. Yeah. Um, that's kind of my my background. That's my what I'm all about. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. Okay, Hike Paddle Bike asked, when you first arrived in Sauk Prairie, did you picture raising your family here and staying this long? No, I didn't. And matter of fact, no, I was actually, when I came in 1994, I was in the middle of, it was interesting because I was still working for the DNR and there was a hiring freeze statewide, meaning that the state wasn't hiring any game wardens. So I just planned on being here for a couple months maybe and then I was out I was going to, to back to the state full time but it's interesting Chief Strunz Jerry I've known Jerry since 1990 and Jerry also worked as a as a deputy game warden in the area and he's the one that recruited me to come down here and work because I was working up in the Dells in 1991 or 92 and he was up there and we met and he said why don't you come down and do it so I started doing ride-alongs with Jerry back in the early early 90s but I'm like, you know, my, my background, my bachelor's is in natural resources, environmental law enforcement, and that was a passion. Um, I skipped a job in Kansas as a game warden. Um, didn't like Kansas. It's kind of flat, not much going on there, and wanted to stick in Wisconsin. So um, I didn't expect to be here. I was like, 95, I'm out of here. But then Missy graduated in 96 and was hired as a working for Head Start in Madison as a teacher director of an allied and we kind of settled here and that was it and then all of a sudden it's, you know 20 some years later yep. pretty interesting you just never know Ugh, well we're so lucky to have you here yeah. well no I, I appreciate it and it's it's great okay uh Chris and Fred asked what does the Sauk Prairie Police Force need these days from Sauk Prairie you know I, I think it's it's nothing nothing tangible, you know, but but it's more philosophical in a sense of just the support, understanding, um, and, and looking at when we're making decisions and being open and honest and transparent and 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 just a second. Another always working. Yeah. We're good. Um, and I say that transparent because we, we really respect the, the public's input. You know, to be able to call and say, hey, I, I disagree with this decision and this is by ABD. Um, and understanding that when we're making decisions out there is we're putting us through the think tank. You know, we're, we're ramming us through the input machine and seeing what we're getting the output of what is best for Sock Prairie. What is best for Sauk City and Pertisac with our demographic, with our ge geographical location, with everything like that is um, what is best in policing, what is best for recidivism, what is best for 
you know, our population, our families. And I think that's, that's more of a philosophical thought ideology process versus, Hey, we need, um, you know, donuts every Saturday or something, but I'm just kidding. But, you know, more of a, more of a support and questions, feel free to ask. It's, yeah, you know, that's what we want. Great. Okay. So this one's a longer one and it comes from Tracy Thompson Holmes. Oh boy. So she says she's a big fan and she says a lot of other lovely things about you. Um, but her question is, so you are the face of the department and she says you're consistently upbeat, friendly, outgoing, approachable, but what heavy weight do you carry? What stresses you out in your job? Like, what don't we see? Ooh, you see the, the drive for perfectionism. And I think the, the people that see that the most are the ones I work with. Okay. And, you know, that's where, like, Jerry Chief Strunz, he can, he can tell you to a T when I'm I, – sometimes I, <laughs> I'm not the most pleasant individual when I'm working or when, when we have to get business done. Um, but it's that professionalism, the drive. Yeah. And I, so many times you take it personal. It's like, hey, if this is going on, <clears throat> when we need to do something about it, we need to do something about it now, and this is how we're going to do it kind of deal. So, but that's, that's kind of the, that's my anxiety that I, that I work with on a daily basis. So when we start talking about mental health and people being angst up and stuff, I'm, I'm right here with you. I can tell you, you know, how we cope and how we process, but yet I, I do it very positively. And yeah, there's good days, there's bad days, but I think as a department to stay upbeat and as a supervisor, you wear a lot of different hats too, but it's, it's just making sure we're doing, doing things right. And um, because the community deserves it, the, the, the police department deserves it, the people we interact with deserve it. Um, because there's so, <clears throat> there's so much animosity across the nation too, with cops and stuff. Yeah. And, um, I think it's just my, my anxiety of perfectionism kind of deal, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. My last question for you comes from Lee Culver and she wanted to know if you're still dancing. <laughs> um, you know, I danced last night in the kitchen and my daughter looked at me, she goes, oh dad, stop. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it was to, um, what is it? The new weekend song, Blinding Lights? You guys should do, did you see that video that went viral? <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't do anything. Yes. The dad and daughter dancing? I think that you guys could do that. Yeah, we could maybe do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we could maybe do that. <laughs> Just saying. Is there anything else you'd like <laughs> to share with the Soft Prairie community? That's like. I do. What I have, I have a couple things here. Oh, just good. a couple. Um, first of all, on a serious note, I'd like to share this. And let me know if, can you see that, Lindsay? Yes. Okay. I'll hold it here for a little bit. This, these folks we, we meet with on a weekly basis. Um, South County Department of Health is, is kind of our go-to um, for what's, what's happening. Again, like I talked about that global trickle-down effect nationally, globally, nationally, state, county. Um, and they have a lot of good resources about COVID-19 from mental health resources to, um, you know, anxiety to what am I, where are we looking at? What's this current doing? All these different things. And, and I always tell people too is when, when I'm done with work, I don't look at the media. I don't look, I don't, I don't read anything. I'm done because I have to unplug because I know when I come back in the office, it's we're plugged in. Yep. And we've been plugged into this nonstop ever since probably early March kind of deal. But that those are some really good things. Um, the other thing too I want to tell you is Yes. We, Thank you. It's, it's working. It is. And you know, that's why I was talking about seeing vigilant, seeing vigilant with the, the six foot social distancing, because we have a lull right now, meaning that the curve is starting to flatten, but yet we're hoping it's flattening for a reason because we're doing our jobs kind of deal. And we don't know when this is going to go on. We don't know how long it's going to be, but the fact is we need to live it now. Um, this is what we need to do because it's important. 
And as the days progress, we'll receive different information almost on a daily basis. It's fluid, it's, it's moving, and, and nobody really knows right now, but Safer at Home is working. The other thing that's really, really important, we need to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Every morning we get up, um, because we see a lot of different things we're dealing with where I could, I could see how easy it is if you, like I get up every morning like I was going to the office, but I get up, do the same thing, get dressed, and I'm in my office, ready to go, respond, you know, squad, down, down the road kind of deal. And I think it's really important for people who, um, especially kids who are homebound now and, and doing online school and, and just making sure that we're being healthy. Parents making sure we're being healthy and, and our, our adult anxiety is not getting so bad <clears throat> that's affecting our kids. Mm -hmm. Staying positive is really important. Okay. I drew that. I drew that picture, Lindy. I, yeah. You've got some skills, Travis. Another good reminder? Yes. Okay. Travis, you know that we teach art classes here, right? You do? Well, <laughs> I want to show you this too. You see, that? <laughs> see that? You know what that is? Did you make that? That is a wood duck. That is from like 1986 Wisconsin Dells High School art class. Wow. In Boulder, in my office. That's priceless. That it is pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah I'm like, the stuff is timeless. It yeah, just, yeah. it's, it lasts forever. Um, <laughs> and I think the other thing too is we're definitely all in this together. Those, those are six foot apart. Yes. Just, you know, are you one of those yeah. people? Huh? Are you one of the people there? Yeah, I'm this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. That one. Obviously. Yeah. And then, you know, we get a lot of time sitting at home. So we, we ask ourselves, what are we going to do? All right. So we got to be thinking about different things. So being like an 80s kid growing up, we had a lot of cool arcade video games. And one of the, one of my favorite games was Qbert. But if you don't remember who Qbert was, he kind of looks, has kind of a head like a coronavirus thing. So what I did is I'm like, well, if I was really, really, really smart today, I make a video game where Qbert would eat coronavirus. And this is kind of what it would look like. Raise it up a little bit. There we go. Yes. Makes sense? Wow. Impressive. Kubert, it's 1982. It's 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very few things change. Yeah, that's about all I know okay. right now. I'm sure I'll have lots of emails and stuff. Well, if people have questions, they can comment on this video and we'll try to get those answered. Yes, but uh, on a serious note, if, if they have concerns or questions or in the community, we are, are doing business a lot differently. Like our, our, um, our lobbies at the police department are closed due to COVID. And we're really encouraging people to do their registration with vehicles or license plate renewals online. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff by phone. So, and, and that's <clears throat> to protect us, but also to protect the folks too, you know? So we're looking at this on, on both, both ends. Well, thanks so much for chatting today. Of course. Wish you the best thinking about the whole yes. department and everybody staying safe out there. Yeah, of course. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, Cheers. Take care. Yeah.